Today we're gonna paint bell peppers. What's up friends, it's Ron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today we're gonna paint these lovely bell peppers right here. Uh, this is actually taken from a sketching session I did um, ugh, a hair. Um, uh, from a watercolor session I did uh, just to practice and I just decided to record it and sort of share with you uh, how I do it. It's a really small painting like this size um, and so I was really loose with it and just trying to have fun, let it all blend and bring out the, the beautiful highlights in it. Uh, very straightforward painting, uh, you will have my commentary on it. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so basically the first thing I want to do is sketch the frame. So I'm just uh, creating a rectangular shape. And the reason why I do it is just because I want to have the composition down. Sometimes it's really hard to just go ahead and uh, draw something. It's nearly impossible if you're working on a big scene, but if you're working on a small scene, you need to have the boundaries and know where, uh, what's the area you work in. Okay, uh, what you see is uh, real speed. <laughs> I'm just starting to work on the, the right bell pepper, and now that I have a frame and I know how I want to locate it inside the frame, I can start working. So I don't really want to show all of the plate, I just want it to be focused on the two bell peppers, so I uh, allocate a, a large space just for the right one. Um, and then I will add the second one, and in the beginning you don't have a lot of things to, to use to know where to put everything, so this is why I felt like I need the frame. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time with starting uh, a painting or a sketch, they don't know how to do it and how to locate stuff, so having a frame really helps. Um, sometimes it's it's better psychologically than to just have the papers frame. You know, some people just say, well, I have the papers borders. It's not enough. Sometimes you need to see it physically in pencil. Um, so anyway, getting the bell pepper in, the shape is very, very basic. It's not as accurate as the image. And this is where uh, some of you that may not be very experienced in drawing will uh, enjoy this because uh, these objects tend to be rather simple to, to sketch. And you will see how even an inaccurate sketch can lead to a beautiful painting if you do the right, you use the right values and so on. So I'm nearly done with the right one and you need to really take your time and observe the object you're uh, sketching. The bell pepper is divided into these uh, bumps all around it so you really want to make sure you get that in. And now the next obvious thing that guides me towards the continuation of this sketch is the shadow which is why I put it in. And then using this shadow I can um, lo I can place that second uh, bell pepper. Now the thing I'm doing now is I'm actually drawing it according to the light and shadow. So you see I cut uh, shape that's fairly low and then I add sort of another one on top of it uh, because we see uh, one bell pepper from the side and another one from the side too but it's laying down um, facing towards us with the upper stem okay so now I'm drawing that area of the upper stem and the green part really divides between the bumps alongside the body of the bell pepper so you want to get all of those things in uh, as accurately as possible uh, but no need to go into too many details, again the watercolor will do most of the job. Now some of it is obstructed by the right bell pepper. I didn't get the shapes perfectly the way they are, but uh, that's okay. You'll see how again a loose uh, drawing, a loose sketch can lead to a good painting as long as you keep the values right and the colors uh, work together well. Um, now just adding a hint of the plate. Uh, trying to use the natural wrist uh, movement, I, it's something I don't talk about too much. It's the very like most technical part of drawing and I will make a video about that, of how I'm trying to use my hand in a way that will put me in the best uh, position to, to get the line I want. Uh, and um, So now just adding uh, final touches which are actually the shapes of the shadows. I literally draw the places where there are shadows, the places where uh, I leave highlights uh, so that I know when I come back with the first layer of watercolor where to leave them. 
Uh, something they could have done better <coughs> is use um, weaker lines to to make these, uh, just because the the pencil comes through too much after I put in the watercolor, um, and it could have been a little better if it wouldn't come as, as strongly as it does, and you can just see the highlights and without an outline uh, from for that matter. Um, just indicating again the the cast shadow light comes from the right, somewhat from the right. Uh, there's there are a few lights here, and the, the lighting condition is fairly complex. But um, you have reflective light and all sorts of things. But I try try just to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I'll let you know uh, when I put the color, like how I approach this uh, more specifically, the lighting. So now uh, starting to prepare the yellow to use on that right bell pepper. Um, I need it to be a little more orange, and the new gamboge is not orange enough. Actually, the new Schmincke, um paints I got, the, the their yellow felt, felt a little more um, orange. But for this one, I just decided to keep it fairly orange, fairly uh, yellow, just because it's an initial wash, and um, it doesn't really matter. And by the way, the color doesn't come through as well as I wanted to. Uh, through the camera. Uh, it was a little bit more orange. Uh, so now working my way around it and just a quick tip as you can see the wash is relatively wet uh, and the wetter the wash is the harder it is to control so you need to move that puddle of water around uh, make sure you uh, don't <laughs> go overboard because sometimes you can it's easy to uh, paint out of lines uh, which is not a disaster but just too extremely sometimes it can ruin some stuff so you want to keep it uh, as wet as necessary but uh, still make sure you control it somewhat to some kind of level uh, i i painted around the green base of the stem because it's going to be significantly darker and so uh, i could allow myself to do that so now my plan is to mix some orange and use that for the darker areas just as an initial wash um, the shadows if you carefully examine them have some blue in them they have some red in them um, the light that's coming through the the bell pepper um, is also reflected in the cast shadows uh, and so I'm just trying to get an interesting mix of color for the shadowy area. Sometimes you don't have to follow the exact colors you, you see, you can create a, sort of an impression of them. Um, for example, the left bell pepper that has the, his right, top right side very light, has some blue in it. And this is something that sometimes is challenging to get. Uh, but yeah, I'm just doing the, this uh, wet and wet as much as possible. Trying not to, to mess with it too much, but just enough to get the variation uh, I want. I know this won't give me the contrast I'm looking for eventually, but it will help. Okay, so I'm just trying to get that. Uh, now, while that shadow is still wet, I try to get that left bell pepper going uh, because I do want the initial wash to mix. So I don't care if the two bell peppers mix the shadow of the right one and the left bell pepper. I let it all mix. And again, very wet wash. Uh, you want to be careful about it. Uh, some parts of the stem here are lighter than, the, than the, the body of the bell pepper, and so I do negative paint around it, and I will leave it, leave it for later on uh, to use the green. Um, so yeah, the wet wash, again, hard control. You just want to make sure you're being very careful with it. Uh, as opposed to, for example, dry brush, where it's almost as much control as using a pen. Okay. Uh, so just an example, trying to get a little bit of a darker accentuation on the, I guess, on the left part of the bell pepper. I'm leaving the right part completely uh, white for now. I will use some blue for it. Um, actually, right this second, I believe. I felt like it needs some uh, purplish blue. Um, and later on, I just make the rest of the bell pepper darker, which makes it pop. Uh, and you can see some of the red of the bell pepper is bleeding into the ca the cast shadow of the right pe pepper, uh, which is okay, uh, no problem with that. But you can also see there's a big puddle of uh, of yellow that I need to take care of, and I will in a few moments. Just want to get that wash to be as smooth and even as possible. Okay. The fun part about making a small sort of thumbnail uh, paintings like this is that it all mixes together, but it still looks good. Um, and it's very simple and you can do multiple of these and it doesn't take too long so you can get a lot of experience just doing these kinds of, uh, of paintings. 
um, but really just the, the puddle needs, <laughs> I should have probably cleared it, cleaned it uh, earlier because, uh, yeah, and now the plate itself is still dark, so I'm just going in and darkening it a little more. Uh, towards the right it has some yellow in it, so you'll see me going for the blue, but then immediately to the yellow. So trying to get it in one brush stroke, not to complicate things too much, and then I switch to the yellow and get that variation going. Uh, this is something that's really important to give a, a beautiful varied look uh, to your paintings. You don't want to just use one paint every time, you want to let them mix. You see here that puddle sort of mixed into the, the wash. And the problem with that puddle is that some of the paint dries, but then the water comes on it. Okay, so I cut the part where I dry it, but trust me, I did. <laughs> um, the problem is that the water moves the pigment that already set into the paper, which can ruin the quality of the wash. Okay, so now getting that uh, top part of the stem, uh, just putting in green. The paint is completely dry. This is dry on uh, dry on dry, wet on dry, sorry. Um, and you know, at some you want the paint to completely dry before you put in anything else. Uh, if you paint at that point, it's like um, it can ruin a lot of things. So it's either wet on wet or like wet on dry completely. Uh, so just getting in those stems, let it dry again because this is still the initial wash. What I consider as the initial wash. And now I feel like the right bell pepper needs to be a little oranged or a little darker. Um, even the darkest, the lightest parts should be darker. So I just go over it again with another yellow, uh, layer of yellow. Should have added probably a little more red um, to make it a little golden, I guess. Um, yeah, still painting around the highlights, uh, avoiding them. And you see the, the pencil line is so strong here, uh, which is uh, just my bad. I should have used the. Uh, uh, weaker lines and I actually just finished another still life painting and I already applied this I used very light pencil lines for the highlights sometimes you can get away with not drawing the highlights if you're good enough to to trust yourself that you will really observe while putting in the wash uh, so it is possible it's just I don't think it's really recommended um, I, I think it's better to put some kind of indication for me, you know, uh, if you're at a stage where you can, um, you can, you know, you will be okay without it, go ahead. And because of the puddle, you can see how there's, uh, like flowers, blooms in the, where the cast shadow is. So this is one thing that, um, it's not that bad if it happens in the first wash, because as soon as I'm going to lay down the second one, it's going to fix itself. So my plan now is to darken the parts of the stem that need darkening. And I'm just using a stronger mix of uh, sap green. I'm not varying it too much uh, because I know I will vary the next layer with some sepia probably. Uh, but just trying to get that uh, indi indication, those um, sort of lines running through that stem. Um, uh, there's a, um, like a slits running through it. And so I'm just trying to get them in, and all the area under the stem is actually darker. So I'm just going, going to darken it completely, uh, not worry too much about it. Maybe leave just one or two highlights. As you can see in the reference, there are a few light uh, areas to the right and to the left. And this contrast is what gives realism. Uh, when you look at, um, at a natural scene, there are some strong contrasts, much stronger than uh, than you initially imagine when you paint. I um, mean, I say this uh, a lot, probably starting to sound like a, no, not yet starting to sound like a broken record, but I will, I'm sure. Uh, one of the most common rookie mistakes with watercolor is just not enough contrast. So you want to make sure you get that contrast in. Uh, you see right now it's very flat because everything is the same except for that stem I'm darkening. But the more I darken it, the more the contrast is created and the better and more realistic it looks. Um, sometimes you can get too much contrast and then it looks like um, a bit like a crutch or an attempt to save a painting just by contrast, which is also not that good. Uh, mixing something for the shadow here. I'm just using some. Uh, I'll, I'll put all the paints in the description box, but this is sepia and um, and some uh, Prussian blue, I believe. Now the thing is that this is not dark enough, and I can already tell. But I just go with it for now. 
uh, try to make the best of it and I know I will just glaze on top of it another layer. Uh, for the left bell pepper I used Perlin Red uh, and I mixed into it some of the Prussian Blue as well to create that uh, magenta purple. Uh, for the right one I just used the new Gamboge and uh, maybe a touch of red but I just barely. Oh, so now I'm drying that puddle. <laughs> Uh, because of the paper's um, buckling, you actually get these puddles. So you just want to get rid of the excess paint uh, in there. Okay. And again, I'll have the list of all the paints. Um, my feeling is that the original reference is a little warmer than my result. Um, so I, this is something I'm still trying to figure out, how to get that the, the color, not necessarily the same pigment, but the same level of warmth or coolness. Uh, requires a lot of knowledge of the pigments you're using. Uh, not not an easy fit, feat, that's for sure. <laughs> Struggled a bit with that word. Uh, so what I think I'm doing now is making a mixture just to darken the left side of the bell pepper. Uh, we'll see in a moment. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what I was doing, uh, but I'm using the new Gamboge with some sepia uh, to get yeah to get a darker yellow. Again, a bit more sepia into it. Uh, lots of mixing. This is important. Uh, sometimes you, it's hard to tell what you need to use, and you just have to mix until you get a result you want. And, and even then, you won't always know. So I'm just getting those darker areas. Should have used again probably a more orangey kind of. Uh, color should have added a little more red to it. Uh, I really, when I see this now, it's, it's, it really surprises me that I didn't. Uh, now what I want to do is be very quick about it, put down that uh, shadow and then immediately clean the brush in clean water and blend the edge. And you'll see me do that in just one moment, just trying to get the edge I want uh, where I want it to be. Sometimes you need to paint a little over it because once it blends, it disappears. Um, I'm kind of, um, I can assess how wet the paint is, so I can allow myself a little more time until I blend it. Um, but now, yeah, I'm cleaning my brush in the water, drying it on the towel, and just going for it, you know, making it blend. And you see now the gradual change. And I'm doing the same thing for that top area, and also for the bottom, and all of that. Just you want to get that gradual change. Now, you already can feel that this looks a little more real now, uh, because of the strong contrast on the stem and all of that. The one thing that's missing actually is the, the cast shadow. Should be significantly darker, and this is what will bring us the result we want. You will see, uh, you will see this happen after I finish working again on the left bell pepper. So now I'm mixing stronger mix of perlin red. Just the same old thing. The same color. I don't vary it too much in this example. Um, I probably could have created a lot of interest by mixing in the Prussian blue. Uh, again, this is something I'm still working on. Um, yeah, I believe I was also talking with a friend on the phone while making this and funny enough I find that this actually helps me uh, loosen up because I feel like I'm just talking and enjoying and while I'm doing it I'm <laughs> painting. Uh, so anyway, now blending in that edge of the, um, of the red because it is blended in the reference. Cleaning the brush, going back uh, into the... just blending a bit more on the top here. Yeah. Um, you you really in order to blend you it's a lot of a lot of experience. Uh, it's always hard assessing how wet or how dry the brush should be, and it's many times relative to the wash. If you have a very uh, very wet wash on the paper, uh, you can afford to have the brush I think a little drier. But if the wash is wetter, you need maybe a little bit wetness just to keep the uh, the wash moving a bit when you blend. When you um, yeah, uh, or when you uh, yeah, you blend the edge. There's another word I forgot that a lot of people use for it. Not blend, something else. Uh, but anyway, yeah. A blur the edge, I don't know, something else. Uh, this area is really dark. It's actually one of the darkest areas in this, uh, in this little scene here. Uh, so I'm trying to get it uh, to look right. And by getting it to be very dark, you can see how the right side of the bell pepper, which is left lighter, will pop. It's all about the contrasts. And the one thing that still lacks in contrast is the cast shadows because I haven't gotten to them. And this will be really the magical moment when, when I do get into them. Now I'm not actually painting the bell pepper right now. I'm just looking at the shapes and trying to paint them. Just the shapes of light and shadow. And if you can get into the habit of 
painting shapes and not the actual object you see, you are able to disconnect from uh, what you think is there and actually paint it as it is. Okay, because right now I don't even realize, but what I'm painting is actually the shadow that the right bell pepper is casting on the left one. And I don't even think about it. I just put in there the darker value as I see it. And this is where the strength comes from, from seeing and just painting what you see. And this is why I think this one turned out uh, nice, because I just painted what I saw, uh, not what I thought I saw, not from my imagination, um, yeah. Now trying to get, I think, a weaker uh, mix of red, just to supplement the areas between the shadows and the highlights, because it feels like there's too strong of a, of a transition. So I'm just trying to, you know, get it to look a little better. Uh, by the way, I hope you enjoyed the time-lapse version of yesterday. As I wrote in the description box, I decided to try out again some time-lapses, but to really make them distinctive by making them short and fun for anyone who just wants to see a very uh, rapid uh, painting because I felt when they were longer they weren't different enough from the real-time version. So I just uh, decided to, if I'm gonna try to put them to use time-lapse, um, to just use something that's significantly different than the full painting process for people who may be bored with this kind of thing. Um, I know a lot of you aren't, but some of you may be, so just to make sure that you're not left out. Um, yeah. So just trying to get a better definition again of the shapes here. I can see there are some darker areas running around. Uh, really playing around with it, and the stem right now looks a little detached from the scene. The reason why is that it's still very light, and I say this again and again, when something appears detached from the scene, usually it doesn't have a strong enough value. That's what I came to learn. Uh, when something has too strong of a value, it doesn't feel detached. It feels a bit um, show-off-y, maybe, or a bit um, like a... <sighs> I, it's hard for me to find a word to describe it, but it doesn't feel detached. Detached is when the value is not strong enough. Um, right now I'm really getting ready for the fun part of putting in those uh, darker, really darker areas. By the way, the left side of the bell pepper should be even darker, I think. I'm not sure if I'm darkening it more uh, later on, but uh, yeah. And now you see how this beautiful cast shadow creates the beautiful separation between the plate and the bell pepper and this is really where the fun starts when you get those contrasts in um, it's really fun to put in an initial wash and have all the colors blend and then work with the darks to bring it all together and don't forget uh, the lights come from the darks so in the beginning it all may look a little sometimes you may look at something and think it's too dark and then when you put a really dark wash you understand it was light and I just can't stress enough how much this all comes down to practice it's just practice nothing else uh, Joseph's book which which I just adore his work always says he says the first and this is his mantra the first thing I do is paint and I love this mantra because it really makes you see why he got as good as he is. Uh, it's really his priority to just practice. And um, now I'm just trying to get a good mix for the darker areas, for the shadows, I believe, uh, on the right bell pepper. Because you see it has a bit of orange in it, some other colors. Uh, so anyway, uh, I love this mantra because... Oh, for the plate, sorry, for the right side of the plate. So I love this mantra of just, first I paint, he's not worried about anything else, and and it really just comes down to practice. You want to be able to have a good wash control, practice. You want to be able to to assess how, how wet a wash needs to be, how strong a paint needs to be when you put wet in wet, you want to learn all these things, just do, just do, that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, if you're not practicing on a, on a consistent basis, you're just not going to get there. It's really all it comes down to. And at times when I didn't practice as much and I spent more time on working on the business or maybe putting more effort into sketching, uh, my spontaneous sketching style and all of that, uh, at times like this, I really didn't see a lot of progress in watercolor. Now, uh, because I worked so hard for a year, I also didn't lose my ability. Okay, Just didn't see any significant progress. Um, you'll notice how on the right uh, shadow on the plate I tried to get a mix of uh, soft and hard edges. 
Oh, softening an edge, that's what I wanted, not blending, but softening an edge, that's right, <laughs> that's the word I was uh, missing earlier. Anyway, you'll notice how on the right I try to keep a blend of uh, soft and hard edges, on the left I'm just trying to soften it, just, that's because the shape of the plate is, is soft, there's no hard edges there, it's very smooth and uh, the shadow just is caused due to its edges being raised a bit, um, so yeah that's that you want to another good component is getting those <laughs> interesting combinations of hard and soft edges which is something I still don't control enough uh, by the way working on it so uh, now I'm mixing the the dark green for the left stem of the left bell pepper uh, which will really bring it out and make it pop uh, you can, I'm just again painting the shapes where I see dark I put in dark where I see light I see light disregarding what the actual object is okay so yeah it just comes down to practice if you want to be able to have control over it it's um, yeah <coughs> sorry um, I was just saying that uh, because I practiced so hard for a year I didn't really lose all of my abilities and this is something also like don't uh, don't be stressed about going back after a break or uh, things like this I know a lot of people are worried that if they lose their streak <coughs> they will have a hard time and they will kind of lose their progress. Usually in the drawing fields, uh, people that are more beginners to drawing in general tend to think that they will just lose their mojo if they, you know, take a break. It's not true. The, the experience stays stored in your brain, but it definitely collects some rust that you need to, um, to clean before you can go on and continue building upon your improvement. Um, at this point, this is nearly uh, done, actually. It's really almost... Uh, prepared. The one thing that's still missing is actually a background and maybe just some details here and there and a stronger cast shadow on the right bell pepper, which I don't know why, but I left uh, really to, to the to the later stages here. And if you look at the painting and you compare it to the image reference, you don't really see the difference. It's, it's hard to, to tell how dark it should be. I'm using Perlin Red and some sepia. It's hard to tell how dark it should be, but it should be much darker. Um, I think this is actually a mix I'm going to use for the left side of the left bell pepper, because again, I said it needs a little more uh, darkening to, to bring out that contrast I'm looking for. And you really build it up from light to dark, slowly but surely you build it up, uh, you make it look good, uh, you go through the ugly stages of the painting, you go through them, you're not worried too much, you delay and postpone your judgment until later on, all those concepts I uh, talk about. Um, and yeah, it's just I think I should make a separate video dedicated to the ugly stage of a painting. Um, I think I will do that. Um, yeah. I'm just writing it down. <laughs> and now you can see how this contrasts really helping save this uh, left bell pepper and, and helps to feel the, you know, because you notice how the bell pepper is actually darker than its cast shadow. And it wasn't before I added that uh, darker value. Okay. I hope this whole uh, layering and glazing process doesn't bore you. Um, I find it fascinating, but uh, yeah, it's just slow work <laughs> sometimes. You know, you sometimes see a crazy looking painting and you forget that the the work on it wasn't as glamorous as the final result. You know, it's just putting a wash, getting wet and wet where you need, getting those uh, soft edges where you want, um, letting it dry, putting in another wash, maybe splattering some water in it if you want to get some texture, uh, really just building it up in a totally non-glamorous way. <laughs> and that's, that's what makes good paintings. It's not the ones you go wild usually, at least in the beginning and at least for me. So now I'm making this shaded area a little stronger. Uh, I felt like it needed it. Um, also the stem <clears throat> on the right bell pepper I think should be a little stronger. I don't remember again if I do it or not. I'm um, sorry about the breaks. I just literally look at the picture and try to understand if I'm on the right track. Uh, so if anything you can use that as a better indication of what the actual process looks like. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So I hope it doesn't bore you, but this is literally is how it works. And if you paint with me, then it's even better for you. I'm trying to assess what type of, of, of color I need here, both for the stem and for the shadow. I just put in a bit of everything uh, to mix in something that's 
uh, a little warm, a little yellowish, um, and just putting it in there. And this is really what's going to make this look good. <clears throat> that um, cast shadow is the final element that we still didn't put in here uh, that will really uh, make make the right bell pepper pop. And after that, uh, all that's left is optional really to make the stem a little darker, um, just touch-ups here and there, but this is basically uh, done at this point. Uh, there are some things that are a bit confusing in terms of the uh, shadows here and you will see me uh, I'm just lifting some excess paint and you also will see me lifting some of the Shadow part just because this is how I see it in the reference and I took it a little too far to To follow what I see in the reference because it wasn't really necessary It's just the complex light coming from a complex window with probably a lot of glasses and um, of different types it wasn't really necessary to go that far with the details and and I don't even know if they read that well uh, but yeah, I just did it as I saw it and uh, at this point I sort of figured that I may have gone too far and I don't <laughs> continue adding more of the details on the plate because the plate should be shouldn't compete with the bell peppers you know the bell peppers are already full of details and different um, values yeah so now I'm just mixing that green that I told you for the final details of the stem I'm using a, a bit of sepia in it to get it darker probably should have used more blue uh, blue is really present in many shadows, but I just ran out of the French ultramarine that I like, so I'm, uh, I'm I'm averse to using the Prussian blue too much because it creates some nasty granulation. Just because it's two different brands, it's like the Van Gogh and Daniel Smith, uh, they shouldn't work perfectly together. I don't expect them to. But anyway, yeah, less details to the stem, just to make it really pop. Um, yeah. The upper part of the stem really, really now pops thanks to to this. Uh, it sort of helps to anchor it to the bell pepper itself. So, um, uh, yeah, slowly, patience, you know, uh, layer after layer to get the look you want. Sometimes it takes time. It takes. Um, I'm really learning patience um, lately with my paintings, with my sketches, um, just to get that, uh, you know, look you want. I think I feel like I'm <laughs> literally growing up. Um, and becoming more mature by <laughs> thanks to uh, painting yeah you can really learn a lot from it if you really dedicate yourself to something um, not just painting any type of um, creative endeavor you can learn so much uh, about yourself and about um, other things you can find correlations with life really and yeah we're getting a little deep here <laughs> uh, but it's true it's true it's really a part of it I feel like there are so many topics I have to to share with you and um, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do that. They come sort of in the in the between in between different conversations and different topics we talk about uh, and I think they're a nice supplement but I think they could stand alone as their own uh, pieces of content you know um, as a quick video here as a quick video there actually thinking about recording some stuff doing more of a uh, not podcast necessarily but just an audio uh, thing um, trying to understand what would be a good way to do that um, not sure if it's the right moment but maybe towards the future anyway mixing now burnt sienna and sepia uh, this is really to get in the background okay uh, the background is darker than the than the plate and i want to make that plate pop uh, the bell peppers are lighter as well, most of them, not the left one is darker, uh, but to really get that look in, I'm mixing. Now, on uh, looking back, I should have kept this part a little lighter, mm, and, I'm, and I am trying to, you know, I put in a little more blue, I put in a little more uh, burnt sienna, I, I try to get the consistency I want. Um, and this is where negative painting comes into play. Uh, just trying. By the way, you see, you saw me just take burnt sienna and put it straight on the paper because I felt I wanted it stronger. So now I'm negative painting around the plate, around the bell pepper. This is not easy. Uh, it's a technique uh, I recommend you practice on, like as a practice session. Negative painting. It's really good to to learn how to master it. Uh, it has so many uses. Um, usually, I tend to leave the ultra darks. Uh, like this, that are detached from the main object for uh, maybe negative painting or something like this. I did a very similar thing with today's um, today's still life painting I did. Uh, I just shared it actually on uh, Instagram. Uh, so yeah, negative painting all around the plate, trying to get it as accurate as possible. 
making sure there aren't any funny, <laughs> weird shapes. And as you can see on the right, the values of the background and the plate are similar. On the left, the plate is much lighter. Uh, the right bell pepper is lighter than the background. The left bell pepper is darker as the background. Uh, so these are the things you want to pay attention to when you put in uh, the background or when you just compare values. Mm, now the one thing that requires a little correction is the edge on the right, and you'll see me do that now. Uh, just correcting the edge where, um, also on the left, where the uh, background touches the plate just to get a smoother uh, look to it because the plate is smooth it has smooth edges and with that actually we're like done just getting that smooth line and here's the final result i hope you enjoyed let's wrap up friends i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you learned something new uh, if you did enjoy it don't forget to follow me on instagram and snapchat i actually shared this painting several days ago um, on instagram and snapchat and including the process as well so uh, if you want to get the most recent updates on paintings i work on or sketches i work on or just cool things from my daily life don't forget to follow me there and also subscribe here on youtube and please drop a comment if you enjoyed this video and let me know what you want to see more and um, yeah and how it helped you or what's the one thing you learned from uh, today. So anyway, I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, take care.